Hi there, my name is Vishnu Dutt and in this video we will explore the concept of border node in SDXs. Once again, we will stick to our plan of learning new te technologies or concepts by comparing them with legacy concepts. Hence, in this video, first we will have a look and feel of a typical legacy campus network of a fictitious company XYZ. We will explore the different advantages of this network which is really, really important in getting the concept of border routers in SDXs. Then we will discuss about why border routers are required in SDXs fabric. Finally, we will discuss internal and external border routers in detail. To begin with, let's see how a typical enterprise network of a company named XYZ looks. Understanding of this diagram is crucial if you need to understand SD access border functionality. Consider this diagram. Here we have a campus site, this one here. We have data center here, this one. And in the data center, we are running various applications and services on these servers where uh, which are eventually consumed by our campus and other branch users. Maybe you can run ACI or application centric infrastructure here in this data center, which is Cisco's software defined solution for data center, right? This data center can be present in the campus or it could be present at some other independent location. For this enterprise network, we have data center located separately from campus site. These routers or switches connect our campus to data center over these links here. So these routers have complete knowledge about data center and campus routes, correct? Campus user needs to connect to internet also, right? And exactly for this reason, you can see the internet edge router here that is giving internet connectivity to the users. I have also connected a firewall here, this one, which could be used to block unauthorized access from internet towards your enterprise. We call this router as an internet edge. Does that make sense? Yep. Typically an enterprise has various remote sites or branches which are dispersed across various geographic regions, correct? So here, as you can see, we have our remote sites of various scales. These are the remote sites. MPLS and internet are mainly used to connect this enterprise remote sites, data center and campus together. Remote site one, this one, is larger than remote site two and remote site three. We have different WAN connectivity options present on these remote sites. For example, the site one, this one, is connected to both MPLS and internet on separate routers. This router and this router, right? Site two here, this one, is connected to again MPLS and internet, but on this single router right? Site 3 is only connected to internet. The important part is to understand how routing is working in this enterprise network. Let's consider this WAN edge router first. We call this router as WAN edge as it is connected to MPLS cloud and our remote sites are also connected to MPLS. It is perfectly fine if you don't know MPLS, but for now assume that MPLS is a technology over which we can exchange our enterprise routes. For example, if I have a route, say 10.1.1.0 slash 24 here in my campus or data center, I can advertise this route over this WAN router and it is the responsibility of this MPLS cloud to deliver this route to my remote sites. This way, remote sites can reach to my campus or data center, right? Similarly, we can advertise a remote site route, say 172.16.1.0 slash 24, which may belong to site one over this MPLS cloud so that campus and data center can reach to this site, correct? The important thing to note here is that we export our campus and data center routes to MPLS and import remote sites routes from MPLS. Be with me guys, all this will make sense when we talk about SDX's internal border. You guys may be wondering 
that if site 3 is only connected to internet which is an unsecure medium how it can access the enterprise data center application and other remote sites the simple explanation is that generally we use wan technologies like dmvpn or dynamic multipoint vpn to connect these remote sites over internet cisco also offers sd wan solution which is software defined solution for wan infrastructure we can have more discussion on these technologies in some other videos these routers or switches connects our campus to data center these switches okay this data center can be present in the campus or it could be present in some other independent location hence on these routers we export all the routes from campus and other remote sites towards data center and import all the routes of data center towards campus we call all these routes there is data center routes campus routes and these remote site routes as internal routes because these are internal to our enterprise we can also call them as known routes because these routes are known to this enterprise correct guys now consider the internet edge router this one here routing is going to be simple here on internet edge generally we do not import routes from internet and mostly only a default route is advertised towards the enterprise campus network correct hence if a host or you can say this host this one wants to reach to a destination or route that is not known or not an internal route it will use this default route to reach the internet edge and internet edge will forward it towards the internet correct so the internet router mostly serves routes that are not known internally or we can say that this router is responsible for sending traffic to unknown routes correct but yes we do export routes towards the internet if we have public ip range okay with this we have discussed all the necessary components of a typical enterprise network now let's see why border router is necessary when we connect our sd access fabric to other networks consider this diagram here on the left hand side we have our old legacy enterprise network which we just discussed on the right hand side here we have a sd access fabric here we have edge nodes these are my edge nodes we also have some intermediate nodes in the underlay these are the intermediate nodes here we have control plane node we have already discussed these nodes in the previous videos of this educational series correct so you already have your campus fabric but now you need to connect your campus fabric to external world like data centers that may be here okay so here is your data center internet suppose this one is your internet okay and other remote site so what is the problem here do you see an issue if you connect this enterprise fabric to outside world the main problem here is that inside our fabric we use vxlan as data plane and lisp as control plane right if we send the same vxlan packet outside it might be possible that other devices don't understand this vxlan packet so if you send this vxlan packet to internet no device in the middle can understand this and eventually it will be dropped correct so there must be someone who can understand both worlds which means that someone who can understand the normal ip packet from the internet and vxlan packets from my fabric and also converts these packets accordingly and exactly you got the point that someone is the border node so these are the border nodes this one and this one now let's discuss border nodes the border node is an entry and exit point for all the data traffic that is going in or out of the fabric typically there are three types of border nodes first one is internal border so this border connects to the known routes of your company the example is data center routes and routes of remote sites over mpls are internal routes of this enterprise which can be connected through internal border router the second type of border router is external border router which connects to unknown routes what are the unknown routes 
yes you got it right that the internet routes are unknown correct so this router which connects your sdxs fabric to internet will be the external border we also call this as default border and the reason is that the edge nodes can use this border as default gateway for all the routes which it doesn't know maybe now this border routers are making sense in sdxs fabric right if you don't want to use two different routers as internal and external border routers you can use third type of border router which is anywhere border that can be used for both known and unknown routes you may want to use anywhere border router if you have a small remote site and you don't want to spend on two different border routers okay so if i compare this with left hand side can you guys guess where i can place the border routers yes correct these core switches will be the internal border routers because these are connected to data center networks which are known networks or routes this router the internet router will be our external or default border router as it is connecting to unknown routes so now here is a question for you guys what should be the type of border router which can replace this manage this one in sdxs is it internal or external border please do comment in the comment section now let's discuss in detail why there is a need of dedicated border nodes instead of using just one default border consider this diagram here we have edge node which is configured to send all traffic to default border router for the destination it doesn't know how to reach this means we have just one default or anywhere router if you don't get it let's draw the traffic flow coming out of this edge node this one suppose a packet from this edge switch wants to reach to remote sites okay here these remote sites as we are sending all traffic towards external networks to default border router the traffic will first reach to this border router here this border router correct once it reaches here it came to know that the destination could be reached over wan edge router hence it forwards the packet back towards wan edge and the traffic flow will look like this interestingly you are sending back the traffic or hair pinning the traffic correct this traffic behavior is undesirable you will see a similar traffic flow when a packet wants to go to data center this traffic will be sent back towards the data center edge router here is the traffic flow correct to avoid this hair pinning of traffic it would be wise if we replace these two routers with internal border routers this is exactly what i have done in this diagram here i have changed the wan edge and dc edge routers with internal border routers now the routes of remote sites will be learned via this border and the data center routes will be learned via this border router correct hence this edge node exactly knows that to send the traffic towards remote sites it needs to send the traffic to the internal border router so here are the traffic flows when a packet from edge device needs to go to internet it can go directly via default border this way right the second traffic flow is when the packet wants to reach the remote site or data center it should go via these internal border routers directly right when i started this video i thought that i could finish the sdxs border in this video itself but i could see that there are still some concepts and packet box which are pending so let's discuss those remaining concepts in next video i hope you have enjoyed this video see you in next one